now we're going to do 15, 29. So this one is one that is um, on an incline. So first you're going to draw your picture. So here is my block, and I'm pulling it up with a force of 50 newtons. Okay, and this angle here is 37 degrees. Whenever you have a problem like this, the first thing you have to do is you have to say, what direction is this moving? And I'm actually going to write on here moving. Why am I doing that? Because whenever we do these problems, I have to, have to establish my sign convention. And I always want my sign convention for it to be in the direction which it's moving. So up the incline is going to be positive because that's the direction it's moving, and down the incline is going to be negative. If the block was moving down the incline, I'm going to change my sign convention because I have to sum forces in the direction in which it's moving. So my sign convention now, my X and my Y, is going to be parallel and perpendicular to the surfaces in contact. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my free body diagram. So here's my incline. On an FRQ, they're going to tell, you, ask you, only draw the forces. So here I have my tension going up. Now, my normal force acts perpendicular to the surfaces on contact. On the AP exam, what they do now is they ask for point of contact. So if they say point of contact, we're not going to do it from the center of mass. We're going to show it from the point of contact. So this is my normal force, okay? My weight acts straight down, and here's my weight. So this shows all the forces acting in the direction in which they act. Now, so that's my free body diagram. In order to do this problem, I have to have all the forces going perpendicular and parallel to the surfaces in contact. So this angle here is 37 degrees, but my weight is not going that way. So I have to take my weight and break it up into components. So this is geometry, so look carefully. You see this triangle? You see the incline here? The incline is a right triangle. And you see that angle there? So here is showing the big triangle. So now when I flip this over like this, remember my components, this is where I start, so first I'm going to go this way, my components have to be perpendicular from the head of this vector. I do the tail of the other. There's my 90 degree angle. So here's my triangle. So this angle here and this angle here, those are similar triangles. Okay? So this one is going to be FGY. This is going to be FGX. So I'll just go ahead. I'll draw it to the side. First I'll do F of G is equal to MG. So it's 5 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. So F of G is equal to 49 newtons. Now I'm going to draw my F of G. It goes down like this. I'm just going to do a little bigger. So I know this now is 49 newtons. Now again, the, my components are head to tail. The direction of these arrows are important. So this is FGY. This is FGX. They're always perpendicular. And now this is my 37 degree angle. Okay. So FGX is equal to 49 sine of 37 degrees. So FGX is equal to 29.5 newtons. FGY is equal to 49 cosine of 37 degrees. So FGY is equal to 39.1 newtons. So now, after I get all my components, I'm going to redraw this. And I don't have, let's say this is on the incline. So now I have T. I have my normal force. And now, instead of the weight, I'm going to have FGY and FGX. And again, the vectors, the direction is important. So it, the problem I asked to find, for the, find the acceleration. Well, acceleration is going in what I'm calling the x direction. So there's my sign convention. So I'm going to first write, I'm calling a positive. Summation of f of x is equal to ma. What forces do I have going in the x direction? So I have t minus fgx is equal to ma. 
I want to solve for a, so I'm going to rearrange the equation to solve for the unknown in terms of the known. So t minus fgx over m is equal to a. I have t, I have fgx, and I have m. So this problem's easier than I thought. So I have 50 newtons minus 29.5 newtons divided by 5 kilograms. So 50 minus 29.5 does that. So A is equal to 4.1. And remember, a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. So this kilogram cancels with that, and I end up with meters per second squared, which is my correct unit for acceleration. And that's it.